good to see each and every single one of you here tonight. God bless you and welcome to another Hotspot broadcast this Tuesday night. Amen. It is good to be in the presence of the Lord and it is good to be able to hear about the things of the Lord. So welcome. Those of you who are viewing via Facebook Live and YouTube Live, I invite you into this space. Come on into the house. I invite you to invite others to come and share this experience with us tonight. I'm excited about this new series, amen, that I am starting this evening. That's right. You heard it here first. Another series, praise God, coming out of Susan Graham Ministries. And this one is a series entitled Decree It. Decree It. Okay, uh, I tell you, it's a powerful word that the Holy Spirit has just dropped into my heart and my spirit for a while. I've actually been studying uh, the, the power of our decrees uh, for quite some time. And so now I just feel led to bring it before you. I've heard so many other confirming words around this same powerful topic. So I know it's time. This is the season. It is time to release this word to the people of God. Amen. And to confirm what so many other men and women of God have already been saying. So Again, I invite you to invite others. Go ahead and hit that share button if you're uh, watching via YouTube or subscribe to the channel while you're there, okay? Uh, and then for those of you who are on Facebook Live viewing right now, go ahead and like my page and follow my page and share it with someone else. That share button right there at the bottom is yours. Amen. You can do with it what you like, but I would prefer that you hit it <laughs> and share this broadcast this evening. And then, of course, everyone that's viewing, I would love it if you would simply let me know that you are here by uh, just saying hello to me in the chat because I want to greet you in the name of Jesus and thank you so much for viewing. Uh, just some quick announcements coming your way. We have been at the well. This is our Bible study experience every single Monday night on Zoom at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. This is indeed absolutely and without question a Bible study experience. It is something that you have to experience in order to appreciate and we have been encountering Jesus as we have moved through methodically the gospel of Luke, just stepping into his shoes, walking where he walked, listening to the things he said, watching his actions, thoughts, deeds, and reactions, and of course, learning more about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In order for you to join the well, it really takes no major effort on your part. Simply go to the website that you see on your screen right now, www.gracedwithfire.org. That's graced with fire.org. Go to that Bible study tab at the top of the page and hit that. Read about what we do, how we do it, and when we do it. And then join, join, join. Sign up today. I would love to see you this coming Monday as we complete or at least continue in our study of Luke chapter 13. We have had a tremendous time. And let me just tell you something. There is no bragging. There is no boasting here. But there is just a celebration, an air of celebration as it pertains to the well and how we have been discovering, amen, God's word in a new way. Uh, last night was a tremendous, tremendous study experience. We again tackled Luke chapter 13, but we looked specifically at verses 10 through 17. Woman, thou art loosed. And for those of you who were there last night and had experienced this broadcast and was blessed by it, that is the well on Zoom, I want you to go ahead and testify to that truth in your chat. Say, I was there and it was amazing. Or just say, woman, thou art loosed. It was amazing. Uh, talk about how you've been blessed by it. Encourage the people of God so that they can come on over. Amen. And join us and be a part of that experience. And then I also want to let you know, for those of you who are viewing for the first time and are not familiar with our ministry, there are three arms to Susan Gray Ministries. One being the well on Monday nights. Amen. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then, of course, there is tonight's preaching moment, uh, the hot spot, which is where the Holy Spirit just gives me a word to give to you. And I just preach off of that word. Amen. And hopefully it's a word that will continue to bless your lives as you move through your day and your week and your month and your year. And then, of course, lastly, we have our final arm of Susan Graham Ministries for now. Uh, this is our television broadcast every Thursday night on the Inspired Living Network, which can be seen and viewed simply by downloading the Inspired Living Network app or going to Amazon Fire and downloading the app there or going to uh, Roku TV and downloading the Inspired Living Network app there and viewing this broadcast at 9 p.m. every single uh, Thursday night. And by this broadcast, I mean graced with fire. 
my broadcast is called Grace with Fire, and you don't want to miss that. As a matter of fact, I'm so grateful I'm speaking about this right now. We are in the middle of a series. Amen. The God of Doors. The God of Doors series. If you have not seen that broadcast, you better hurry up real quick because I believe that we are into the second part of that series already. And it is only airing on the Inspired Living Network. I have never preached that word before anywhere else. I don't intend to preach it anyplace else. You've never heard it before preached uh, coming out of me. And so if you want to catch that word, which is amazing and powerful, then go ahead and connect with the Inspired Living Network app and look at that uh, Grace with Fire broadcast every single Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you so much for your patience uh, with the announcements this evening. God bless you. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and greet those of you who are already here. And I see that there are several, amen, who are already here and viewing. So I praise God for my sister friend, none other than uh, Andrea Coombs. God bless you. Grace and peace to you, uh, my sister. God bless you, Sister Roseanne. She's greeting everyone. Good night. Sister Joyce Maynard is here. Blessings to you. Sister Keisha Campbell is viewing. Good night to you, my sister. God bless Sister Judy Charles. It's great to see you here. Sister Faye Waldron, praise God, is in our midst tonight. And that's a blessing, thank God, for none other than Sister Deborah Jones. It is wonderful to see you here this evening. Minister Rowe is also viewing. Praise God from Jamaica West Indies. Sister McQuayla, again from Jamaica West Indies, greeting everyone. It's good to see you, Brother Stoney, Minister Stoney. Uh, you are are certainly a mighty man of God and I thank God for you and I celebrate uh, this mighty woman of God in our midst sister Clestine Critchlow thank you so much for viewing thank you thank you thank you so much uh, minister Rowe for sharing and pulling people in and putting those names in the chat God bless you let's see who else we have here sister Faye Chance is here tonight please give a brother Gary my love God blessings God's blessings upon both of you sister Jean Jones is here viewing from Brooklyn New York sister Cynthia Clark is also here with us tonight God bless you Mighty woman of God. And then, of course, I see Sister Nandy Millette is here as well. God bless you. My sister friend, Quante, is here. Wonderful to see you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He's already ready for the word. Uh, sister Lisa Lowe Clark is here viewing from Atlanta, Georgia. It's wonderful to see you. Sister Moore, great to see you in our midst once again. Petrina Wilson is here tonight, and it gives me pleasure to greet you in Jesus' name. Wonderful to see Sister Cheryl Williams two nights in a row. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in. Sister Diana Bragg is here. So Lifeway is in the house, and I greet you in Jesus name. Thank God for sister, uh, rather evangelist, uh, Magnolia Wilson here tonight. Blessings to you, sister Roseanne George viewing from Brooklyn, New York. It's wonderful to see sister Sandra Bratcher all the way from Barbados, West Indies. Amen. Amen. And sister Donna Bailey, of course, viewing from South Florida. It is wonderful to see each of you in the house this evening. And I am fired up and ready to go. I want to talk to you uh, with regard to like I said at the beginning of the broadcast, a topic that is near and dear to my heart uh, because I believe that this is the season in which we are living. And by that, I mean, I sincerely believe, I know in my heart, I feel in my spirit, I sense in my soul, and the Lord has already confirmed it within me that we are living in a season of decrees. I want you to decree that right now. I want you to declare that right now. We are living in a season of decrees, or you can say, this is the season of decree. That's even better because it's more emphatic. This is the season of decree. We are living in a time where we have the authority and we've always had it as believers. We never, there was never a time where we did not have it as a believer in Jesus Christ. But this is the season of activation. I believe that more so than ever before, God has, has literally charged the atmosphere, amen, with the decrees that are outlined in his word, with the decrees that emanate and come out of of his mouth with the decrees issued by the Holy Spirit. This is the season of decrees. And so by that, I need you to understand what a decree is. But before we jump into that, the, we're, the focus of tonight's part of this, I believe, three or four part series, however the Holy Spirit gives it to me, I'll give it to you. Right now, I can confirm that it's three parts at the very least. This decree it series, okay, allows us to focus on, first and foremost, releasing the power of our words, releasing the power of my words, you releasing the power of your words. And so tonight I need you to understand 
that yes, we are existing in the season of decrees. This is a season where God is allowing, hallelujah, uh, the believers to see, to actively see the power of our words, the power of our words. Let's go to the book of Job chapter 22 and verse 28. That's Job 22 and 28. Grab your swords, how uh, whatever form it comes in, whether it's the actual page Bible or your tablets or your phone, whatever device you're using, let's pull the word of God out and let's turn to the book of Job chapter 22 and verse 28. And again, we are decreeing it. This is our decree it series and we are releasing the power of our words. Job 22 and 28 says it like, or puts it like this, or frames it like this in the King James Version. It says, thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. I'm going to say it again. Thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. So, we look at this. Uh, we look at this. This verse, and it's not done. This is part A of this verse. Part B, the latter part says, "And the light <laughs> shall shine upon thy ways, and the light of God, that is, shall shine upon our ways." So thou shalt also decree a thing. I had the the honor, the pleasure um, of listening to my dear friend, my childhood friend, Minister Jacqueline Graves on, I believe it was last week, it could have, no, it was the week before, I believe it was two weeks ago, on the uh, Hannah's Heart broadcast, and, and I told, I told my friend, I said, I said, Jackie, you snatched, <laughs> you snatched the words and the series right out of my mouth, girl, I said, because the Holy Spirit confirmed through you today exactly what he's been telling me for months concerning the season of decree, and one of the things that Minister Jackie did so effectively and so, 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 skillfully where she defined the word decree according to Webster's or, you know, or Marion or whomever. Uh, and then she also gave the, uh, the, the, the biblical definition of this word coming from the Hebrew translation. So I, I hope I can do it justice, but this is the way that the Holy Spirit uh, has given it to me. So a decree by definition means to issue an official order, okay, uh, by someone in authority. It means to issue an official order by someone in authority. If it's an official order, that means it is legal. That means it is binding. That means it is something that is not questionable or rather cannot be questioned by those who must submit to it because it is being spoken by someone who is in authority. In other words, the person who is speaking it comes in power. The person who is speaking it comes in strength and their strength and their authority cannot be questioned. Now, whether that strength and authority has been delegated or whether it is um, something that is in just intris intrinsically innate within that person, it is still coming in the power and the strength of authority. And so when you decree a thing, you are issuing a legal order, okay? And it is coming through a source that has complete and total authority. The word of God here tells us that we, by the, by the use of the word thou, meaning we, us, okay, human beings, the children of God, those who are the followers of Christ, we have the authority or the power, if you will, the word there should be exousia. We have the authority through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ to be able to decree something or to issue a legal order, okay? And then the word of God tells us that there will be a response to our decree or our legal uh, official order. It will be established unto thee. So when we look in the Hebrew, okay, because the Old Testament is written in the Hebrew language. So when we look in the Hebrew and we break down this word decree, the word decree actually means to cut or to divide, to cut down a thing, to cut it in two, to sever it. <laughs> So when we bring that back into the text, as it pertains to things that are working against our lives, we have the authority to decree or to cut in two or to divide or to sever that thing from our life. And what will happen as a result of doing that? 
we will see that it will be established. That word in the Hebrew means to rise or to stand. It also means to be confirmed or to be, watch this, and I love this one right here, to be ratified. When the word of God goes forth out of our mouths with authority, because we have, as human beings, delegated authority. Okay, so we come in the exousia of God. We come with the authority of heaven. We have the right to do some things with God's authority. And when we do it, when we decree it, when we sever it, when we cut it away from our lives in the realm of the spirit, the word of God says it will be ratified. Oh, come on now. Y'all should know this word ratified from history class. Okay, when a document has been ratified, that means it has been signed off on. That means that it has been confirmed in some way, that there has been unanimous consent concerning this legal issue. Uh, it means to enter into a legally binding contract concerning the thing that has been stated. Come on. Oh, come on. God is preaching already. The Holy Ghost is preaching already. And so what we need to take away from this verse right here, here's what the word of God says. You... Sophia, you, John, you, Michael, you, Jane, you, Susie Q, you have the power, the delegated authority from God to decree a thing. Anything that stands in opposition to your life, that does not come into agreement with the word of God concerning you, that doesn't line up with the prophetic books that are written over your life, amen, that does not confirm your assignment, the assignment that is on your life, that does not verify the oil that drips off of you, amen, that runs from your head onto your spiritual beard as it did Aaron and down your robe and onto your feet, whatever is working against the anointing on your life, whatever is coming against the power of God on your life, you have the power to what decree, in other words, to sever it, to cut it away, to bring division to it, to cut it in half, to divide its power over your life. And then when you decree that thing, you will see an establishment or a ratification of what has been done in the realm of the spirit. You will see a legal document being signed between you and heaven, a contract being entered into between the people of God and the God of the universe that says it is so. In other words, God puts an amen and a thank you, Jesus, on it. Somebody right now needs to put an amen and a thank you, Jesus, on that word. You need to go ahead and come into agreement with this word tonight that you have the power to open your mouth and sever ties between you and anything working against your life, anything working against your children, anything working against your marriage, your relationships, your connections, anything working against divine friendships and kingdom connections. Anything working against your future, your prosperity, your promotion, the productivity of your hands, anything working against your anointing, the, 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 the strength in your body, the healing in your body, the wellness of your mind and spirit, whatever it is, the word of God says you have the power to sever it, to cut it in two, to divide it. Amen. You have the power to do these things. And then you can expect that there will come a legal contract that will sign off on what you just cut in half, on what you just separated from you and your life. In Jesus' name, somebody needs to say amen. Somebody needs to say thank you, Jesus. Somebody needs to say it is so and so it is. In the name of Jesus, we are living in the season of decrees. I need to tell you that there is power there is power locked up in the words that we speak. There is power locked up in the words that we speak. The book of Proverbs authored by uh, Solomon himself, that is King Solomon, David's son, says that death and life is in the power of the tongue. Death and life is in the power of of the tongue. Now, I want you to note the order in which scripture puts that. It says death first and then life. In other words, our words are so absolutely powerful that we have to be careful how we wield the sword of our words. We need to be careful about the things that we say 
and who we say it to and how we say it because I promise you that the power of death can be accomplished through the words that we speak and in, um, at or rather in the opposite way life can also flow out of the words that we speak so the word gives us a warning about the words that we speak we must use them carefully because death and life are locked up in it so much so that I believe it was the Apostle John in John chapter 6 and verse 63 that uttered these words he said it is the spirit the spirit that quickeneth in other words the Holy Spirit the flesh profit is nothing. Our spirit is the thing that quickens us. The flesh doesn't benefit or bring us anything. The words that I speak, John said, unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. What John is saying here is that the substance of our words go out into the spiritual realm and create life all around us. So in other words, our words have the power to create. You need to declare that tonight. My words have the power to create. My words have the power to create. On the flip side of that same coin, you can also say that my words, if I'm not careful with them, have the power to destroy. My words have the power to destroy. And so we need to be careful how we use our words. Do you not know that your words are a weapon? Your words are weapons. And I need you to understand this because it is so important moving forward, not just in this series, but in this year. I have, I've said it a thousand times and I'm saying it again because I'm going to take the risk of sounding like a stuck record. Okay. This year. It's going to be a year like none other. This year has already <laughs> begun to express itself and manifest as a year unlike any other that we have ever seen. This is the year of change. This is the year of revelation and manifestation of the revelation that we've received from God. This is the year of shifting. This is the year of transitioning and being repositioned. This is the year where God is reassigning and redefining. And I'm telling you right now, that God is doing amazing things this year already. If you do not believe it, I'm sorry for you, but I am one who stands in faith. Watch, I'm looking out on the horizon and I'm already seeing the amazing things that God has lined up. I cannot tell you the number of people that have already come to me this year, let alone this week, and confirmed that already God is changing things in their life. Susan, what are you talking about? Not to disclose secrets, but I've had people come to me and say, Susan, God God has opened up a door for me to change careers. I, I have the opportunity to move into bigger and wider realms. God is pushing back my border and trusting me with more. Don't you see that God is already changing some things? Some folk are terrified to step into their change. Others are welcoming it and running into it because they've been waiting for it. Some did not expect it, but because it showed up without their permission and without their consultation, they're shocked by it. They're standing there going, God, are you really doing this for me? God, is this really for me? I've had folks receive testimonies that said, this year, if you just work a few more months on this job, uh, you will be able to apply for a home loan and you will be able to own your own home by the end of this year. You can actively start looking. And I'm here, I'm hearing testimonies. And I'm telling you right now, I'm excited about what I'm hearing. God is doing a new thing. Somebody needs to declare it tonight. My God, God is doing a new thing. And so he's telling us to watch our words. Why? Because I'm going to say this to you and I'm going to repeat it because it bears repeating. I want you to write this down. And for those of you who are quick in typing, go ahead and type this into the chat just to confirm it for those who'll be watching on the replay. I want you to remember this saying, the words you speak will shape the world you live in. The words you speak will create the words you live in. The words you and I speak out of our mouths will create the world we live in. Words are powerful. Words have authority. Let me tell you right now, how do I know this? Because the word of God tells us that we are made in the image and the likeness 
of our Heavenly Father. I think I'm getting ahead of my lesson, but, but, but let me just put that out there because I'm going to connect the dots for you in a second. The words that you speak will shape and create the world you live in. In other words, if you live in a world of prosperity, it is because you are speaking prosperous things. You are releasing words out of your mouth that are defining your future. You are releasing words out of your mouth that have literally become bricks and they are laying on top of one another and creating and building architecturally in the realm of the spirit, the world that you believe you will live in, the world that God wants you to exist in. And so you need to come into agreement with good words. You need to come into agreements in agreement with words that bring power and strength. Where do we find such words, you ask? I'm so glad you asked me. I'm happy to answer. It is the word of God. It is the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, it is the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Hallelujah. It is our biblical instruction for living. It is the authority word of God. It is the mind of Christ concerning us. It is the declaration and the promises of God over our lives. How many of you know that the word of God houses and encapsulates 7,487 promises for you and for me. From Genesis to Revelation, there are 7,487 spoken, written promises of God concerning your life and mine. And the word of God says that when we begin to decree a thing, it'll happen. I want to put you in the mindset of decreeing, not just against things that are working against you and myself, but I want you to consider that decrees have power to confirm God's word. In other words, when you begin to positively affirm and validate your life and the promises of God over your life, what you're doing is you're opening up your Bible, okay? And you're going to the book of Deuteronomy. I'm just giving you an example, okay? Uh, chapter 28, and you are reading through uh, all of the things that God says he will do. Things like, I will make you the head and not the tail. See, when you open your mouth and you begin to say things like, I am the head and not the tail, you are decreeing the word of God. God. You are decreeing what God has said. You are issuing an order, an official order, because you have the authority to do so. I'm going to tell you in a second where that authority comes from, but you are decreeing the word of God. You are speaking it over your life. And I need you to know that because the word of God, because it is quick, because it is sharp, right? Because it is powerful, because it is a double-edged sword, because it pierces, because it cuts, because it divides, and because it discerns, the word of God cannot be challenged. It is a contractual agreement between us and himself that it shall be done. Because God said it, we will see it. If he spoke it, he will bring it to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. And so we know the word has power. The word moves. It is alive. My God, it has energy. It has the energia of God. It is the essence of God. What is the essence of God? His character, his personality. It's everything that makes him praiseworthy. It's the stuff that makes us bow and go low in his presence. The word of God is God himself. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was what? It was God. The word of God is powerful. I'm here to tell you. And when we speak the word, we're saying what God said. When we speak the word, hallelujah, we're declaring what the Lord has already issued. And it becomes a legal binding document that rides out into the future of our lives. And it begins to assign us to different activities and moments and experiences. And it confirms the word of God concerning our future. Somebody needs to get happy about the promises tonight. I want you to know that the word of God is powerful. Now, I want to take you back to this. Uh, I want to take you back to the book of Genesis where we can see the power of words. I want you to know that the kingdom is voice activated. I'm going to say it again. The kingdom of God <laughs> is voice activated. The kingdom of God is voice 
activated. What do I mean by that? Now, I need to jump over to Genesis myself, so give me a hot second to do that. Uh, the book of Genesis chapter 1. And we look and we see immediately in verse, uh, let's uh, start from verse 1, right? It, it, it's always the best place, bless, nah, best place, I can speak, place to start with the book of Genesis 1. So Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God, what? Created. Come now. In the beginning, what did God do? He created the heavens and the earth. We will soon begin to see how God created. Okay. I just told you that the words that we speak, I'm going to give you a hint. The words that we speak, they create the world that we live in. Okay. Our word creates, our words create worlds. Our words create worlds worlds. You hear what I'm saying? So when you say things over your kids, you, you, you ask for prayer. Oh, Susan, pray with me concerning Michael. Pray with me concerning Peter. Pray with me concerning Paul. Pray with me concerning Betsy. And I'm praying over Betsy and Peter and Paul and Michael with you. And I'm coming into agreement that, that God will do this thing for your child, Peter, Jane, Mary, Paul, whatever their names are. And then you turn around after we pray and you say, oh, Peter, you're just like your father. Or, oh, Johnny, you're just like your, your, your father. Or, oh, Susie, you're just like this one. And, oh, this and that, you're just like the other one. Let me tell you something. Your word is creating the world that your children will live in. I promise you we need to watch our words. So the word of God says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and he did this in a phenomenal way and the earth was without form and void. It had no shape and it was empty. You hear it had no shape and it was empty and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Darkness was everywhere. In other words, there was no hope. There was no light. There was no encouragement. There was no sign of productivity. There was no activity. Nothing was going on. And that is what filled the earth. It was void. It had no form. It was empty. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, verse 3, watch this. And God said... Let there be light and there was light. Here's what you need to know about this tonight. God said, in other words, in order for God to create, he started speaking. God simply began to open his mouth. And I'm here to tell you right now what I, what I shared with you before. The kingdom, okay, the kingdom is voice activated. The kingdom is voice activated. The world is voice activated. The world, the natural world that we live in, the stuff, look, I'm, you can't see, but I'm touching this chair right here, or I'm touching my chair back here. The world, everything, everything that you see, that you can tangibly touch, was voice activated. God understood the power of a word. God understood how a word can easily become an architect and begin to draw the blueprints for what it wants to see. Do you hear what I'm saying? Our words have an architectural anointing on it. The anointing of an architect to build what we say. When we open our mouths and we decree things and we declare things, when we open our mouths, whether there are negative or positive decrees or negative or positive declarations, it becomes an architect and it puts a pen in the hand of the architect and the architect begins to draw the blueprints for what your world will look like. When you continue to say things like, I'm never going to find a job. Yes, I know we're in the middle of a recession, but you need to speak what your father said that my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory. Not the world's riches, not the riches of the United States of America, meaning not the condition of the economy in the United States of America or Barbados or Jamaica or Trinidad or wherever it is that you reside, wherever it is that you abide. I need you to know that it is according to his riches. In other words, you will get a job according to God's economy. Do you not understand that his name is Chira. He is a provider. This is a God who knows how to create with words. 
All he has to do is release a word over your life and things begin to form. Things that did not once exist now exist because God knows how to open his mouth and cause his words to become an architect that draws the blueprint for your life. God, you are a provider. Therefore, I decree and declare that a job will be mine in the next month. Father God, you are a provider. Therefore, I declare and I decree that my bank account will look better than this next month. God, you are a chira. You are a provider. Therefore, I declare and I decree, my God, that, that you are cutting off the, 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 the cord or the, the bondage of debt away from my life. I am severing. I am putting division between me and unemployment. I'm putting division between me and lack. I'm putting division between me and, and whatever it is that is operating in my life. You need to be able to decree and declare these things. The word of God says God wanted to create things. Therefore, he decided to talk. The kingdom is voice activated. Your life is voice activated. Your future is voice activated. Your miracles are voice activated. Your breakthrough is voice activated. Your change is voice activated. Do you understand? You need to put that in your chat, in the comment section, decree it, declare it. My change is voice activated. Jesus brought every, excuse me, God brought everything into existence by activating his voice. Or rather, he created the word, the world by activating his voice. And through his voice, here, he, here is what he was able to do. The scripture says in verse three, and God said, God began to speak. He began to talk and he said, let there be light. And the word of God tells us, that nothing responded because remember the earth was without form. It had no shape and it was void. It was empty. Okay. It was without form. It was void and it was dark, but there was one thing going on <laughs> that ensured that power was present. It says that the spirit of the Lord hovered over the waters, <laughs> the spirit of the Lord hovered over the waters. And I decree and declare to you today that the Spirit of God is hovering over your waters in your dark place where you need to see something happen. I need you to know right now that your life is voice activated. It is responding to whatever God says about you and what you say about yourself. When you come into agreement with the word of God concerning you, you will see your world taking shape around you because words build words worlds words create worlds you understand and so now it says god spoke and he said let there be light and there was an immediate response light was created now here's what i need you to know this is a decree from the inception of time from the creation of time okay from the very creation of time god began to decree he set an example of the power of our decrees, the power to be able to issue a formal order by one who is in authority. He is God. He opened his mouth and he decreed a thing. He said, light be. As a matter of fact, when you actually interpret that phrase in the Hebrew, let there be light, it actually translates to Light be, two words, light be, light comma be. It's a command, it's a decree. God literally decreed the entire world into existence. Do you now understand when I say that the kingdom or the world is voice activated? <laughs> it, it activates based on a voice that is speaking that has authority. <laughs> this voice issues a legal command, an official order and things just begin to happen. And so the reason why God tells us in the book of Proverbs to be careful about how we speak or how we utilize our words is because God understands what he did or rather what he put in us when he created us. So here's what I need you to walk away from this experience tonight understanding that God said 
He created man in his image and in his likeness. His image meaning we look like him. When we look in the mirror, there is some part of us that resembles our, our spiritual daddy. We look like our daddy. We have his DNA, okay? And so, yes, whether you're Asian, whether you're African-American, whether you're African, whether you're uh, Caucasian, whether you're Hispanic, it doesn't matter what you are. When you look in the mirror, there is a part of you that looks like your heavenly father. So we are made in his image. But then we are also created in his likeness. It means we're like him. The word likeness literally means that we're like him in what respect? In his nature. We're like him in his abilities. And so we need to be careful because we have the same power that God has. What is that power? To create worlds with our words. We have the power like God because we are made in his likeness, not just in his image, but in his likeness, we behave like him. <laughs> we, have the, we, we have the similar attributes and characteristics like him, not just physical ones, but spiritual ones. We have the power to create worlds with our words. And so therefore, the word of God says in John 6 and 63, the words that I speak, the words that you speak, they are spirit and they are life. They operate in the realm of the spirit because they are spirit and they create life all around us. So I need you to begin to change your language. I need to begin to change my language. We need to begin to say what God says concerning us. We need to be able to decree and to declare what God says through his rhema word. The rhema word is the spoken word of God. It is, it, it, it's the words that God speaks into your ear and into your spirit. When God tells you that this is going to be the year of your change and your breakthrough, and you are going to be able to start that business, you need to be able to say these things out of your mouth. You need to, number one, if I were you, because I, I really don't like to depend on my own memory. It, it, it doesn't always work the way I want it to, but I'll tell you this. I'll give you a testimony in this season. And by season, I mean, for the past two years, almost, it's almost two years, I have been decreeing that I have an eidetic memory. And I, I think I shared this before. I'm almost sure I did. And what an eidetic memory is, it is akin to a photographic memory, a memory where you can literally take pictures in your mind and be able to freeze frame it and then revert back to it and see exactly what or recall exactly what you saw. I'm here to tell you that prior to when did we start this ministry? When did I start this ministry? I think it was um, June, June 2000, June of 2000. Yeah, because that's when the pandemic broke out. June of, two, uh, of not 2000, 2020, June 2020. I just I was struggling. I was like, God, I'm doing two ministries and I can't seem to to, to retain information. Um, you know, I, I'm a sponge. I'll absorb it, but I can't keep it. So it leaks out. And I asked God to stop the leakage. I said, Holy Ghost, I need you to help me to be able to improve my memory. Now, look, I don't got time to be watching all YouTube videos and I don't have time to go to self-help classes or whatever else. I just need you to show me how to accomplish this right here in my house since everybody is on lockdown and we can't go anywhere. <laughs> and in 2020, the Holy Spirit said to me, you need to begin to decree that you have an eidetic memory. You have what is akin to a photographic memory, Susan. Whatever you see, you will retain. Not only will you obtain it, but you will retain it. That means you will have the ability to keep it. And I promise you, I, every time I opened my mouth, I would say to myself as I'm studying to bring the word before you, or as I'm studying to impart the word at the well on Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, shameless plug, I would, I would decree and declare as I'm studying, I have an eidetic memory. In the name of Jesus, I have an eidetic memory. I have the power and the ability to obtain and retain biblical scriptural information. I have the power and the ability to obtain and retain any kind of secular information necessary for me to grow and produce. And I would just begin to say that. It, it just rolled off my tongue in prayer. And as I began to do that, I can tell you saints... 
I have been holding and housing information. God has taught me how to compartmentalize information depending on what it is. I can recall things just by pulling it out of the air. And I'm here to tell you it's because of the power of my decree. I opened up my mouth and I said what God said to me in a rhema word. He told me that I have the ability to do this and I began to speak it out of my mouth. We need to decree what God has written. That means the biblical scriptural word that is written down for us. Those beautiful 66 books, some of them poetic in their nature. From Genesis to Revelation, the word of God says that we have the power to decree the word of God and to see it established in front of us. And so we have the, we need to start saying what God said in his word. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I decree and I declare that my storehouses are full. I decree and I declare that I am blessed in the city and I am blessed in the field. I am blessed when I go out and I'm blessed when I come back in. My God, I decree and I declare that by his stripes, meaning the stripes of Jesus Christ, my savior, my Lord, my sanctifier, my redeemer, my keeper, my restorer, I am healed. I decree and I declare according to Jeremiah 17 and 14, save me, O God, and heal me, O God, and I shall be healed. Save me and I shall be saved. Why? Because you are my praise. I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus, like we talked about last night coming out of the book of Luke chapter 13, that I am a daughter of Abraham. That means that I am entitled to the inheritance and the blessings decreed by God to Abraham. I walk in those blessings. Amen. I, I live in those blessings. See, that's the world I need to live in. I need to live in a world that inhabits and makes room for the blessings of Abraham. What are the blessings of Abraham? That I will multiply thy seed like the sands of the, of the, of the sea. I will multiply your seed like the stars in the heavens and I will be your God and you will be my people. Those are the promises that were made to Abraham and I decree and I declare God. God, that the oil of multiplication is on my life as you have declared it over Abraham so do I out of Sunday hey God declare it over myself I speak into my bank account I speak over my 401k plan I speak over all of my annuities I speak over the trust funds I speak over the CDs in the bank I speak over my savings account I speak over my paycheck and I decree and I declare that the abundance of God hallelujah is operating all around me. I decree and I declare the, the anointing for multiplication is operating all around me. Somebody needs to get into the mode of decrees. You need to start decreeing what is written in the word of God. God. What is written in the word of God? I will keep thee according to Isaiah 26 and 3. I will keep thee in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. I decree and I declare that my mind is being kept. I decree and I declare that I'm not going crazy, that I will not lose my mind over this, that no situation will ever again enter my life that makes me feel like I need to check into a psych ward. I decree and I declare that my children will not be admitted to a psych ward ever again or, or period. I decree and I declare that my children will never speak of suicide. I decree and I declare that my children will not operate, hallelujah, under the manipulation of the spirit of depression and anxiety, unnecessary worry and fear about the future, things that have not even happened yet. I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that my entire household is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I decree and I declare when I feel like I can't take it anymore and my mind can't handle any more pressure, I decree and I declare declare that I have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. I think like Jesus. I talk like Jesus. The words that I speak sound like Jesus. All of my words are prophetic. Hallelujah. They are building the world that I live in. I decree and I declare that I am seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. My God, I decree and I declare that I shall judge angels. This is what the word of God tells us. I'm here to tell you today, we have the power to decree what God God says, and then we have the power to decree what the Holy Ghost is doing. We see the Holy Ghost as being one of the three of the third part of, he is the third part of the Trinity, 
okay? The equal, and uh, he is absolutely the equal with God the Father and God the Son, and he's operating in the earth today, and we see him making moves. We see him playing chess while everybody else is playing checkers, and we come into agreement with the move of the Holy Spirit. We declare what the Holy Spirit is doing. So I declare that in this season, the Holy Spirit has already confirmed that he is granting revelation. I promise you that this word here tonight, this series, the series uh, called Decree It, okay, is a part of that revelation that the Holy Spirit is giving in this season. He is telling us, he is informing us of what he is doing. He is giving revelation. He is granting manifestation of what he has already revealed. To reveal means to show, to bring to the forefront. Manifestation means to make it happen, make it true. <laughs> it's actually happening. And so we are living in that season right now. We are living in our season of change where the Holy Spirit is allowing us to see doors opening in our favor. Therefore, we decree and we declare Revelation 8 and 3. Oh, excuse, is, that, is that right? Revelation 8 and 3. No, Revelation 3 and 8. I inverted that. Revelation 3 and 8, which says, Behold, I have set before you an open door that no man can shut. You need to begin to decree and declare that doors are opening in your favor in the mighty name of Jesus. These are the things that we can decree in Jesus' name. We can see it happen. We can see it come to the forefront of our lives. What did I say in the beginning? And I mean, I tried to say it in the most elegant way possible. It didn't really roll off the tongue, but let me try it again because I've said it, I messed it up quite a few times, but I think now I've got it, okay? So our words <laughs> create worlds. Our words, W-O-R-D-S, creates worlds. And the words that we speak, therefore, create the world that we live in. When we say what God has said, our words are empowered. We see it, and I'm bringing it up on the screen again. John 6 and 63. The words that I speak, the words that you speak, they are spirit, meaning they operate in the realm of the spirit because the words actually take spiritual form. We don't see them coming out of our mouths, but they actually are breathing living organisms. As we utter our words, they breathe. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's what the word spirit means in the Greek. It means pneuma, it means breath, it means wind, it blows. So our words blow, they are wind. They, are, they, they, they just move into the atmosphere and they become life. They, they grow arms and legs and they become a literal spirit being. And then it goes out on assignment and it does what it what you said. Okay? And so we need to be so careful with our words. I'm looking, I'm looking for a particular scripture. Um, let me see. I'm looking for a particular scripture that confirms the word of God. Isaiah 55 and 11, where it says, My words shall not return void, but accomplish all it is sent forth to do. So when we speak the word of God, it will not, remember we just addressed that word void. We saw it in Genesis chapter one, verse two, that the earth was without form. It had no shape and it was void. Okay. It was empty and it speaks to a deep emptiness, the complete lack of anything. No, it, it, there was no life present. There was no activity, no product. There was nothing happening to confirm the existence of anything. That's what that void, that word void means. Empty, an emptiness that is so empty that it's just like, my God. It, it just seems like nothing could fill it because it's just that empty. The emptiness is so big. The word of God says, my word will not return. That's the same word void there. It won't come back empty. It will not come back empty. That means if it's not empty, it's coming back full of something. <laughs> okay. Isaiah 55, 11, my word shall not return unto me void, but accomplish. It will produce. You will see. It will accomplish all it is sent forth to do. And I say to you tonight that your words have power. This series is entitled Decree It. This is part one. Part one is the releasing or rather releasing the power of your words. So tonight 
I want you to continue to do what we have started here on this broadcast. Release the power of the word of God. Shape slash create the world you live in by releasing the words that God has given you to speak over your life. I promise you that the word of God will not return void according to Isaiah 55 and 11. It will not return void unto him, but it will accomplish all, meaning every single thing that it was sent out. It was given directives to do something. It was sent out to do it and it accomplished it because God's words have life, they have power. And because his words have life and power, because we are made in his likeness, our words have life and power. The words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And I speak life to you tonight. Let's come into agreement with this word. Amen. Father, I just want to thank you tonight for your word. I want to thank you, Father God, for allowing us to know that we are living in the season of decrees. This is the season where we will be able to tangibly see, touch and feel the things that you have said concerning us. In other words, if you spoke increase, we will see supernatural increase moving in our natural realm. If you have spoken provision, we will see supernatural provision operating in our natural realm. God, if you have spoken uh, prosperity, we will see prosperity operating and manifesting right in front of our faces. It will confirm what you have said. Father God, I thank you that even now you are teaching our spirits to be disciplined in your word. You are teaching our spirits to come into agreement with what your word declares concerning us. So teach us, God, how to decree your word, your rhema word, the things you said to us through prayer, the things that came about as a revelatory word through fasting, the things that you have confirmed in the mouths of two and three witnesses who came to us and simply repeated to us what God already told us concerning our lives. Father, we come into agreement with every rhema word. We decree what you have said, amen, in our ear, and we decree what you have written in your word. Tonight, we walk in it. We decree it and we shall see it because the word of God does not have the ability to fail. It does not have the ability to return empty, but it will accomplish. It will succeed at the thing that it was sent out to do on assignment. So I thank you tonight, God, that every assignment attached to your word is being fulfilled and is being manifested. And we are speaking it into our atmosphere in Jesus name. We speak it over our children, God. We decree and we declare that all of our children, according to the book of Isaiah, shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace. Great, I decree and declare, shall be the shalom. Sunday. Great shall be the shalom of our children. In other words, there will be nothing lacking, nothing missing, and nothing broken concerning our children. Our children are whole. Our children are complete and entire. Uh, hallelujah. Through the decree and the word of God. God, I thank you that in this season, I will lack nothing because I too live in the shalom of God. Therefore, I decree and I declare, I believe it's Isaiah 26 and 3 that says, I will keep thee in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. I decree and I declare that confusion, chaos, and calamity does not exist in my mind. That disorder, amen, and, and dis, um, a, a state of being disheveled does not exist in my life, God. I am at peace in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to thank you for the peace of God, the shalom of God. We decree and we declare these things over our life tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to encourage you to have an amazing night. I want to thank you for taking the time to view this broadcast. And I want to ask you a simple favor. As I do at from time to time, I'm asking you, please share this broadcast. It is really and truly the most effective way for me to be able to reach others. It is the most painless way for you to contribute to this ministry. 
simply by clicking a button that says share. Please share. Share tonight with those that you care about. Share tonight even for those that you have not met and do not know. Somebody may stumble across this word and have a life-altering experience. So please share, share, share this broadcast. Do so on YouTube. Do so on Facebook. Thank you in advance for pushing this ministry forward and for making this ministry moment possible. Thank you for your support and your continued prayers. They come in so many different forms. Your support, I mean, it comes through the arm of prayer. It comes through your fi financial support. And by that, I mean those of you who are partnering with me to be a Circle of Fire covenant partner. I'm thanking you so much for your monthly contributions. There are those of you who have committed to walk with me financially as we support the Thursday night Graced with Fire television broadcast on the Inspired Living Network. And I know that at times have been hard and maybe your financial commitment has lapsed for a few months. I'm encouraging you to pray about uh, becoming active, an active giver again, an active sower. Please, please, please make that a part of your monthly commitment uh, to the kingdom. Amen. Not just to build up the ministry with words of encouragement, but to build it up with your financial support. And then there are those of you who are looking at me going, Susan, how can I connect with this ministry and partner with you by sowing seeds. And so I want you to know that there are several ways to give. Listen, if you are feeling inspired tonight to sow a seed, you can do so simply by sending it to my cash app, which I believe is somewhere in here. Uh, uh, First Lady Sue, that's a uh, dollar sign, First Lady Sue. But then there are those of you who want to make a continued commitment on a consistent basis. You want to become a Circle of Fire partner. Simply go to the website that is on your screen. Great with fire.org hit that uh, circle of fire tab at the top of the page and you will see uh, all of the ways in which you can contribute first of all you can sign up a very simple sign up form which will lead you to a page that lets you know how you can contribute monthly four simple ways that you can give and sow into this ministry it's a $20 donation but many of you have been sowing a above your ability. Uh, and so I thank you for the seeds that you sow in faith. I actually have attached a name to you. Those of you who have been sowing above and beyond the 20, I always say that you are a fearless giver. And I thank you for being that fearless giver. For those who, of you who are sowing that 20, you are a committed giver. And I thank you for being a sower. And I'm here to tell you tonight, or remind you tonight that God only gives seed to the sower. So thank you so much for being an amazing sower. Uh, the cash app is down there on your screen. Uh, uh, dollar sign First Lady Sue, thank you so much for being a blessing. Have a great evening. God bless you, you and you. And please, please, please remember we are in our uh, brand new series called Decree It. And tonight we are talking about releasing the power of our words. Next week is going to be another powerful word. So stay tuned. Amen. For part two of our Decree It series. God bless you and have a great night.